All right. Hello, Herb. It's just me. I uh, don't know what happened to our unicorn chef, uh, Letitia, for tonight. So I'm going to quickly run us through um, uh, her chicken cordon bleu recipe. So, oh, she is trying to get in. All right, uh, Letitia, I emailed you um, the, uh, the link in both the calendar invite and I sent you a direct email. Um, email also has my phone number if you'd like to call me if you need help. I'm going to get my phone right now. This is a first for the episode.
Um, hi. <laughs> we just, oh, I guess we're yeah. at you. All right, there we go. There is our unicorn chef for the evening, Letitia. There, hey, it there it is. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you just fine. It sounds it's buffered on my end, but that's fine. We're good. All right, <laughs> let's get going. Lead the way. I'm fine. I don't know. You're on. Okay. Hi. I can, can you, you can hear me, right? I can hear you just fine. Yes, I hear you. Okay, great. Um, hello. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so pleased to be here. Um, pardon? I didn't say anything. Uh, so today we are doing chicken cordon bleu, something very, very, very simple um, <clears throat> and uh, easy, actually. Uh, hopefully everything goes well. I call myself prepping just, just right. Uh, and I guess we'll just take it away. Um, everything's on the charger and we're good. I, yeah, I can't hear him. Um, what are we drinking tonight? It's actually because I have to go to work in like three hours. So we're going to do Martinelli's. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, apple cider. I'm, I'm um, drinking a, a Southern Tier IPA. Ooh, very lucky duck you are. <laughs> Sorry that you have yeah. to go to work in three hours. Thank you for joining us before going on your shift. <laughs> It's it's hard for me to hear. I'm sorry. I don't know how to help you on audio on your side. It's I think it's my my headphones. Um, if you don't mind, can we cook? Yeah, please. <laughs> okay, so I um I prepped one just so that um. You know, we can make sure that we got what we're supposed to get. Where is my oven mitt? Um, so, yeah, so I prepped one a little bit earlier just to make sure we were going to get what we were going to get. Um, and so it should work out just fine. Uh, the temperature that we're looking for on the inside of the cordon bleu just to kind of um you know give a high overview the temperature on the inside should be at least 165 degrees um i'll be cooking with uh oil with uh olive oil so it's going to go really well so the cooking speed will go like that it takes about 10 minutes to cook um and then you just put it in the oven afterwards so that that way you're not like eating raw meat which some people like, but it's just not groovy for chicken. Uh, so, yeah. So I'll be pulling out my handy dandy knife kit and um, I'll pull over my butcher block. Can you take this, please? And we're going to use. Uh, chicken breasts, uh, mine are really kind of cute. Got them in here. Uh, well defrosted, just a very simple uh, chicken. Gloves, please. Gloves, please. And uh, I'm going to use some gloves and I'm going to pull my hair back because nothing's better than hair in your food. <laughs> I, I just have to be careful with my beard. It's all good. It's all good. That's where all the flavor comes from. <laughs> <laughs> you better ask. No, that's, what, that's my own flavor. That's where I keep uh, my leftovers. Oh, hey. <laughs> if it works, it works. <laughs> all right. So I'll go ahead. And uh, the first thing we got to do is we got to beat the chicken. And 
I'm going to use like a hefty bag. And I'll put the chicken in just one piece. And it's going to look like that, right? And you need a mallet. Boom. And you want to use the prickly side because it kind of gets in there. Um, and we just beat it down. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. You can do it. Just take all of your frustration out. And you want it to beat down to probably like three like tortilla shells, like the, the thickness of three tortilla shells. So you do it on one side. And start from the middle because if you do it from the middle, it'll like, it'll spread out like a perfect circle, which is kind of cool. And that's what we want because essentially we'll be rolling this meat. Um, in the interim, I'm going to go ahead and start the fire. Um, and just so you can see without like me killing me, I've got my gauge set, got my pot going. So by the time that we're ready to actually stuff this meat and roll it and dip it, smack it up, flip it, rub it down, we're going to put it in there and it's going to be right on time. You guys are going to love this. It's going to be really, really good. I'm going to get a better pair of gloves. Yeah, we get a better pair of gloves because I got to be able to feel. So uh, what, what, are you, uh, what are you going on shift for? What do you do for a living? Aha, I am a career changer. Um, right now I'm working for an ed tech company as a junior SIS administrator. Um, it is fun because I'm learning so much, uh, especially about networking, So, um, which tends to be my jam. So, you know, it's, it's been a very nice road, a very nice road. Uh, I used to be a hairdresser and I did that for a very, 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 very long time. <laughs> um, I used to moonlight as well when I first started um, my journey in technology, um, but I don't have to do that anymore, which is really nice. Um, not like hairdressing is a bad thing, but it's nice to be able to do things when you want to do them, not because you have to. So welcome to my world. Well, we'll circle back in that when uh, we've got this in the oven and we've got more time for uh, conversation. Some chit chat. Yeah, chit chat. So I'm gonna tell you like this here. I like a couple different things in my, um, in my meat here, my little meat roll up, my chicken roll up, my roulotte. Now that I've beat it and made it flat, I'm gonna take some saran wrap and lay it down and spread it out. And so that it doesn't stick on me, so that the chicken doesn't stick, I'm just gonna put a little bit of water. So I'll sprinkle a little bit of water on the saran wrap. Um, and that way, I'm not sitting up here trying to peel off chicken. Cause that is not fun. Especially once you beat it to where it is flat. So here is the flat chicken. 
there's the shot. And I'll go ahead and I will lay it down. And just, you know, just in case somebody might be wondering, like, hey, I beat this meat, and this meat didn't even go out real flat, real, really well. That's okay. You you judge it and make it happen. <laughs> because the meat has to, the meat has to cook, you know, it's gotta cook. So whatever you do, just make sure you put in there what you like. And it's too easy. And everything will be fine. Um, so I'm gonna get some salt and pepper, just a little bit. Because we want to go to Flavor Town, not all of us have a beard. <laughs> <laughs> But that seems to be the thing right now, uh, beards. I think it's a beautiful thing. I have a friend that maintains a beautiful beard like yours. And often people ask them, how do you maintain it? And that's one of my questions for you. How do you maintain it? Uh, so uh, I am new to this beard thing. This is a 2020 experiment. Um, I, haven't, I haven't cut any hair in uh, since February. Um, times. This is this is this is a hair. This is my hair with uh, eight months, nine months of not cutting it. Um, and uh, I've learned about beard oil. So beard oil really helps with both the beard and then really the skin underneath because it doesn't. It, the oil like pulls the moisture out. Um, mm -hmm. And I have learned about. How I I bought my first comb ever. I've never owned a comb before because my hair was always so short. Um, <laughs> and so I've learned how to comb myself. Um, but yeah, no, like uh, beard brush and then like comb to like keep it from like nodding. Very good. Very good. Love to hear it. So many people don't know. Look, you just taught everybody. <laughs> well, this beard's got three <laughs> weeks of life left. I'm going to start off 2021 clean shaven. That's going to be awesome. So look, we're going to go ahead and layer some of this uh, meat, some of the filling. I've got... Um, some ham and I'm just gonna take for my piece of chicken you know what let's do two pieces and piece one and piece two and since my camera does not bend for whatever reason just so everybody can see there's the the ham on top of the chicken and then here's my thing I like Havarti a lot of folks enjoy um, like Swiss inside of their Cordon Bleu, but I like mine to be like extra, extra cheesy and super, super yummy. So I'm going to use one slice of Havarti and I'm going to turn it like a diamond and do it like that. And now I got two. I know fancy. <laughs> <laughs> I did not see that coming. <laughs> okay and so the next thing um because i like cheese like a lot so i was recommending a walk some people really really enjoy mozzarella and this is very very similar but but watch this whose phone it's almost so soft, like if you keep it in your hand, it just starts melting. <gasps> we love that. So I'm just gonna put a couple down widthwise, and you can literally, you just string it. That's how pretty it is. Now, some people enjoy a waka um, shredded already, but for some reason it just, the flavor kind of leaves uh, and it gets kind of dry. It still works, but I just like mine whole and I like to pull it apart. So I'm gonna use really small strips because you don't wanna overstuff this chicken because if you do, then all your cheese is gonna come out and it's not gonna be nice. Then everybody's gonna complain like, oh, you made it, but all the cheese came out. 
Yeah, and you don't need all of that smoke. So there we go. <laughs> and if you want to, you can put like onions and green peppers and bell peppers and all of that jazz. I'm not going to do that tonight. Um, I do have some mushrooms, though, and that would be awfully dope. I added mushrooms, too. I got my chocolate. Exactly. So, um, you know, I'm going to get these mushrooms because I, I can't do it without. So I'm just going to take the mushrooms. They've already been cleaned. They've already been prepped. And I'm just going to take them in my hand and just squish them. Use the force and just squish them. And then I'll lay those down. Okay, so here's the deal. I don't know what people like. So you can either roll your cordon bleu or you can lay it down like a sandwich. Either way, because the cool thing about this, and this is like my whole reason why I even cook on Twitter, um, is because I have like this deep, 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 deep passion for people loving each other, right? And having conversations. And the last thing on your mind should be, do I roll or fold my cordon bleu? It should be, can I have a, a great conversation with my daughters, uh, you know, my wife, my, my husband, whatever the case may be. And um, so there you have it. So I'm gonna, Here is mine, all prepped up. It's I. Right. It's good. And I'm just going to roll it. I'm going to roll. I like the roll. A lot of people, like I said, you can fold it. That's okay. So I'm just going to roll. And I'm going to start. So you just take your, you see my cheese is already melting. I'm going to roll, roll. And you just roll it like you're rolling a jelly roll or maybe like a, a salami roll up with uh, cheddar. Mm, that's good too. Um, and then you just roll it and don't roll it tight, tight, but roll it tight enough and you want it to roll towards you. And then you're going to make a little blanket. I'll show you how I do it. I make a little blanket and I keep rolling them and I keep rolling them. And now it's a cordon bleu taco. And then on one end, do your little doodad just like that. You're just gonna make a little twisty tie like, like candy, like when you make candy. So you're gonna do a little twisty tie at each end. And normally, usually, most of the time, we would put these in the refrigerator and kind of make them kind of cold. And then that way, everything just really kind of sticks together really well. And um, it's a beautiful thing, I promise. Check my... Check so my what, uh, what was the pepper-crusted bacon for? Ah! So... We've got some bacon and we've got some panko breadcrumbs or breadcrumbs or whatever you've done. Some people like sourdough. There's the breadcrumbs. So what I'm going to do is add those, add the bacon to the panko and then we'll stir it around a little bit. And then by the time it is time to dip and, and dive, we got it all under control and it's gonna fry up. And then by the time that we're ready to eat it, oh my goodness. It's like being kissed by your granny. I don't know, but it's so good. And uh, when I made it the other day, I was like, man, that's nice. That's real nice. Um, so yeah, that's what, the, that's what the bacon bits are for. You just have to make sure that you crunch them up small enough 
Um, I chose peppercorn bacon. Um, and it just seemed to work. It gave like a, um, I, I like food that's hot. So it gave like a, a nice heat and it kind of snuck up on you. Whereas we could have put our bacon, just regular bacon after it's cooked in a food processor, right? After you um, crushed up or sliced up like habanero. Jalapeno, I don't recommend. The habanero has such a weird heat to it anyway. Oh, that would have been amazing. So then you put in your, your breadcrumbs and the bacon after uh, cutting up your your um, pepper and then rinsing it out. Because see, what happens is, the way that that happens is, is that uh, basically that jalapeno or that pepper flavor is still going to be in that plastic bowl. And so everything else is just going to take it. And that's it. Thank you for attending my TED talk on bacon crust. <laughs> I need water. Um, so yeah, so I'll go ahead and I'm going to take my egg wash. I've got actually so we did a I like this because we did a similar recipe a couple of months ago um, with uh, uh, an Italian fellow named Stasio out of Philadelphia. And um, so one, um, we, you know, we got the Maryland, Pennsylvania thing going on. Uh, <laughs> we've got to pick on that rivalry a little bit, but it's also a very similar setup, right? Where we're butterflying our breasts, we're pounding them flat, um, we're, we're rolling them in our wash. Uh, and so, just for folks who also want to see a different way to do this, uh, check out the, the episode with Bob. Very cool. I'm sure Letitia's is better though. Hey, you know, it, I'm Southern. Hey, so. I'm, I'm, I'm with the guest. I'm with the guest that's here now. Bob's dead to me, right? <laughs> you're, you're, you're the whole world at the moment. Oh, that's so sweet. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Got it all in my hands. Um, so yeah, I've got some flour here. I already got the flour going. I've got, I like eggs, right? But egg whites just seem to be the jam for me. And um, so I'm using egg whites. So quick tip. If you've never fried chicken before, or if this is like first time for anything, um, all you have to do is pay attention. So the tip for today is make sure that you egg wash your whole piece of chicken, because if not, your flour is not going to stick. And then the panko breadcrumbs are not going to stick to that. So it's, it's kind of like putting on makeup. <laughs> uh, you put on a base first, and then you put on your powder to set your makeup, and then you put on the color. Same thing. Hey, shh, I got fur babies in the playpen. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and wash, do the egg wash on my roulette. And I'm going to make sure that this chicky has full egg on it. Next thing is the powder, the powder, the uh, <laughs> flour. Looky, looky. You want to make sure you powder everything. That's a big deal. Okay. And then shake it a little bit and you put it in the breadcrumbs. And you just want to kind of do your thing and make sure that it sticks really, really well, your breadcrumbs. 
And if you want to, you can double dip. And I think I'm going to do that because I want to. So it's your, it's your show. So I'm just going to dip, 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 dip real quick. And make sure that everything is covered. All right. My, my dog came over and said hello too. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> All right. So the oil is on. The gauge tells me it's at 350. I'm just going to drop a couple crumbs in there because I want to hear it dance. So what you were just doing there is to see um, when oil is hot enough. Yeah. Uh, you can't, it, it doesn't do anything, right? It doesn't bubble like water. So you just add a little something, you'll see the, the bubbles come around it, and that's how you know you're at. Yeah. A way to check temperature by look. Yeah. So that is that. It needs to warm a little bit more just for a moment. I'm checking my other, the one that I prepped earlier for the temperature. And it is at 162. So that's nice. Oh, you already, you already have uh, one that's in the oven? Yeah, I, I had, I had um, made one earlier because I wanted to make sure just for one last time. <laughs> I didn't want well, it to I'll be a bad experience. I did mine a little differently. I did it in an iron skillet um, as opposed to completely deep frying it in fat. I, I sauteed it and then I'm going to finish it in. But you can see my, my little pretties. Oh, that's beautiful. And what a smart idea. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of iron skillets. I mean, they're not expensive. You don't need to get a fancy one. They, they make them for like 15 to 20 bucks, and they're exactly. really versatile. Exactly. So, stove to oven. Boom. Boom. That's pretty nice. All right, so let's start while we wait for the thing to get hot, for us, the, the oil to get hot. Shall we start on mashed potatoes? Sure thing. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be making mashed potatoes. I actually have leftover potatoes that I'm going to use. But I am going, I'm looking forward to that gravy because it's a great way to, to zhuzh up some uh, older potatoes that have been sitting in the fridge. Yes, we can make the gravy. We can go ahead and do that. It's funny. I don't. I don't know if it's just where the, the way this year has gone or what. But I don't tend to make like dedicated gravy very often. Like if I'm roasting meat, I'll reuse the drippings and I might make uh, gravy from that. But going out of my way to make a gravy, I rarely do that. Yeah. Rarely. Yeah, it's, it's a thing. I think um, with most, like if you're going to fry something or if you're going to make something really savory, having a dedicated gravy is the way to go. You know, um, I, I don't, it's like saying, yeah, I'm going to make chicken marsala and I'm not going to make the sauce. Well, I mean, yeah, I would do it for that. For but... that, yeah. <laughs> um. I so think this is actually the first gravy we've made on the show. I don't think really? we've done gravy in any of the other episodes. Huh. I've lost I count. Like, I think you're episode like somewhere between 25 and 30. 
<laughs> okay. We did, we did have an entire episode around how to make um, a mirror glaze icing. So that's kind of close. Ooh. So, I mean, it was like, you know, gravy for a cake. Yeah. I'm stretching here. <laughs> so what are we doing? So I have my, I dropped my uh, chicken and I have that going. Now, my alarm loves my cooking. So we may hear that sing, but I'm sure, I'm hoping not. Um, next thing, we need some butter. That's what I forgot. We're going to need butter for the uh, pork gravy. Yeah, so I, uh, I already took my bacon fat that I rendered out of the bacon that I made. Mm -hmm. uh, I've got it in there with the butter. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Leticia had mentioned how she had the peppercorn uh, crust of bacon. Uh, an easy way to make that for yourself at home is you just take regular bacon and you just cover it in pepper when you cook it. Um, and it, as opposed to doing it on the stove, if you do it in the oven, the pepper will stick to it. I'd like to show you a piece, but I ate my leftover bacon. So butter is going. I love that. We got that sizzle going. Yeah, butter is going. Let me pull this out real quick so I can put it in the oven. Because if not, we're going to be mad, mad. Let that go. Switch a roux. How much, uh, how much do your kids love this meal? Say it one more time. How much do your kids love this meal? This is this, this like a family favorite? This is a family favorite. I don't cook it often because it requires time. Yeah. Um. So this is all you. This is all special for, uh, you know, for the show. I might cook this maybe once a month. Maybe. Maybe. So what's a what's a regular go to to keep the family happy? Regular go-to around here. Um, they like rice a whole lot. So it's usually like broccoli rice, um, uh, possibly some chicken, but usually they like stuff like mahi, uh, you know, lots of fish, things like that. Um, and they wow. like a lot of fried <laughs> potatoes. <laughs> so, yeah, it's it's a thing. It's a whole thing. Um, let me get my. So this is basically real easy. Uh, it's flour, butter, milk. Um, oh, and grated cheese, which I did not grate. What are you going to put in yours? Uh, um, so bacon grease butter, um, add the flour to get a roux. Um, I've got a, a stone ground Dijon mustard. Love it. I'm probably going to add a little bit of garlic. I add garlic to just about everything. <laughs> right. Um, I also, I, uh, the leftover mushrooms that I had that I didn't stuff. Um, because mm -hmm. I made a, I made a, one of the chickens for me and one of them for my daughter. My daughter hates mushrooms. So the leftover mushrooms, I just threw in the pan next to the chicken. So they'll roast there. And then yeah. I'm going to put that into the gravy afterward. Right. That sounds good. I've been doing this a while. <laughs> it's, it's been a minute. Hey, I can tell, you know, you ain't new. <laughs> How how did you and I first uh, first meet? What was uh what was the recipe that I reached out about? I don't I know it was months ago. <laughs> <laughs> On the spot, I I you know what I I can't remember. I think that we have been talking back and forth for a while, and I think it was on. Um, 
gee. Maybe, maybe it was the cake I made. But I made like this crazy strawberry and um, it was like strawberry lemon cake. But I found a recipe that my aunt had sent uh, a book for. And I was just like, hey, this is good. Let me put it on Twitter. Next thing I know. <laughs> Yeah, so reminder for those of you at home watching, um, hashtag Unicorn Chef, share what you're making. Um, we always like to see how your recipes turn out, so share how you, your chicken cordon blue works. Um, and also, that is how I do find people for these shows, too. <laughs> <laughs> Although, that being said, we're actually, we're booked up for the next six months with uh, with Unicorn Chefs. Oh, my gracious. That's, that's excellent. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't, if you haven't heard, um, we're going to be releasing uh, a a recipe book of all of this year's chefs um, after the end of this year um, to raise money for charity. Oh, very cool! That's excellent. That is excellent. This will thicken up real quick. Yeah, my my roux getting good. So hey, let me ask you this: Would you do you prefer heavy cream or milk? So uh, I will sometimes get heavy cream for two reasons. One, there are certain recipes that the the heavier fat works better. Um, uh, it saves you time because with with um, like I, I usually have two percent on hand. Um, you have to just cook longer to get more to the fat and boil out that water. Mm -hmm. um, and heavy cream also lasts a lot longer than regular milk because of the high fat content. So I did not get heavy cream. Um, like I tell everybody throughout this, it's the pandemic. You you work with what you got. Yeah. Peas you got. You work. You know this is this is a great recipe because fundamentally it's get the chicken, put in the middle of it whatever you want. I mean, right. cordon bleu is traditionally ham and cheese, but We've added mushrooms. You get out all sorts of different things. You can experiment and do a whole bunch of different stuff. I pretty much always will have milk. It's been hard finding certain kinds. Um, so I'm using regular milk for my gravy. Nice. My, my, my kid drinks a ton of milk. So this is. The... So you have it. <laughs> Got it. Like I said, you just gotta you just have to cook it a little bit longer to 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 work out the the lower fat content. What about you? Um I I, I prefer milk. Um I got a little bit right here. Um, just do a little bit of parmesan that I'm milking in there. Yas. Yas. And so I guess I, I guess it'd be easy to say if you have lumps, it's okay. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, the only the only recipe I, I think that you can ever work too much on lumps is pancake. Yeah. You take your lumps, just work, just take it. Because you go too hard, you're gonna the, the proteins and the eggs actually stiffen and you get like hard pancakes as opposed to soft ones. That's crazy. But Have you ever had any hard pancakes? Keep going. Ooh, that melted very nicely. Add in the milk. We making it work. I gotta add some more. So how did you uh, how did you make that transition from being a hairdresser? Oh, 
I think so. I'll just, I'll, I, this is something I think really appeals to a lot of people. Um, <laughs> IT, cybersecurity is a hot field. Yeah. And you've made that jump. How I made the jump. It, it was definitely some sort of leap of faith, I can tell you that. Um, at the time, I was working at this really hot salon um, in DC. And it was great. It's fantastic. The one big thing that I had this really big pet peeve of was people coming in asking me for their hair color. And they're like, you know what? Hi, Leticia. This is what I want. I want purple down at the ends. I want it to be ombre with blonde. And they would go on and on and on with all of these colors. And I was like, I wish that there was a way to actually have a preview um, of what they would look like. And so I asked a friend, I said, hey, can you show me how to make something like a Charlotte Tilbury mirror? Because at her, if you go into one of the one of her store, or if you go to one of her counters, you can actually look at the mirror and it will do like your face without doing your face, which is excellent, right? And I wanted to do the same thing, but I didn't know how. And of course, I was very far away from tech because, like, I did hair for twenty years. So. Um, my friend said, I can show you like the basics of coding, but everything else you're going to have to do on your own. And as I went down the rabbit hole, I noticed that in order to make all of the colors so that my clients would be able to preview what they had, that's like not a one person type job, like a whole team does the coding for that. <laughs> so um, I kind of went away from it. And I said, well, I got to do something different. Well, the salon closed down. And I'm, I went back to Texas and I said, okay, what am I going to do? And I got a WIOA grant, which was great. So, you know, uh, got the grant, did some classes, learned what I needed to learn, and found that there's more than just uh, code. You know, and uh, not everybody is going to be a developer. And some people like to hook stuff up and break things. And some people like to fix them. And so uh, for me, uh, it went to networking and, and a deep, 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 deep dive. It felt like I'm sure for a lot of people, it's probably very shallow. But for me, it was everything because it literally saved my life. You know, um, and then I started watching YouTube and uh, started learning about like mainframing and gee whiz, there's so much to it. So from, so it's been three and a half years, uh, a very short time, but uh, such, such a good uh, experience. Um, so I've been able to go to DEF CON, I was crowdsourced for DEF CON, um, went through, um, some classes with Diana Initiative. Uh, saw a whole bunch of just, oh my goodness, so many talks. Um, and then earlier this year, um, I went to SHARE, uh, which is the mainframe conference. Um, it's such a blessing because it's literally technology. Even if, if I did not touch another computer today, I can go to any salon and tell them, hey, why is it that your your uh, CCTV is broadcasting to everybody? Let me show you how to fix that. I have a skill where people, uh, the normals, don't have that. And so why are we sitting here allowing us to, you know, why are we sitting here having massages or getting our hair colored or, you know, getting hair added on? You know, and people are seeing it because the salon owner has decided that they wanted to put cameras in, but they don't take the initiative. They don't do their due diligence to actually know that, hey, you're impeding on people's privacy. This is a whole big thing. So, yeah, uh, I'm not going to go on and on, but that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. So, um, 
you know, working in, in the job I work now, um, I get to fix things that other people break and it's liberating. And I feel so blessed to have this skill set. And um, even my daughter, my daughter uh, is studying for A. She's just like, I want to do that. And I, I asked her, I said, why? She said, because I want to build a computer. Well, you go ahead then and get your A plus on and get your stuff. So yeah, it's it's a whole family thing. My mom used to code COBOL. You know, it's 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 a thing. So um, I just, I guess for me, I just thought that I never could do it because even though I was exposed to it, I just felt like, oh no, it ain't for me. You know, I'll, I'll stick with hair. It was very comfortable. I was very good at it, still am. And, but making the transition to doing something different, it just, it worked out for the best. It almost, I, I would say it saved my life because now I don't have to stand up behind the chair for 12, 14 hours. I can just, you know, sit down on my comfy chair and, and find the stuff, find anomalies and read dumps all day. <laughs> so what's, uh, what, what's the next step? Where are you going from here? So um, from here, uh, possibly, I don't know, maybe a government contract or something like that. I don't know. Um, uh, definitely school is on the horizon because, you know, there's so much more to learn. Uh, and I know that that takes a long time, but I just want to be able, I just want to let people know, uh, my gravy's done, by the way, uh, that it is never too late. It is never, ever too late. Don't feel as if, oh man, I've been a plumber for 17 years, you know, and you just have a fancy for, you know, breaking or fixing old Ataris. That's okay. Do that because it's going to make, it's going to make you um, think and dream and wonder and, and figure out things that you never knew. And that's a beautiful thing. And if people would actually just embrace that, and it doesn't even have to be tech. Well, most of the stuff is tech, but it doesn't even have to be tech. Kids are walking around here, <laughs> pair programming, and they don't even know that's what they're doing. You know, one is on the on their laptop looking for the cheat codes, and the other one is doing the flips and changing the skins. It's a thing. And if they just embrace that, they might find that they like creating that game or you know, uh, doing mod uh, modeling or whatever, you know, it's just, thanks for attending my TED talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the, the best hackers in the world are uh, kids when you get in the way of them wanting to do something. Absolutely. <laughs> They're always finding a workaround for something. What was, so, uh, what was your favorite part of DEF CON? <sighs> <laughs> there was so much, it was like an amusement <laughs> park of hacking. And I've slept since then. Um, for me, I'm going to say when the badges came out and people were putting them on and they started lighting up and doing really crazy things. Yeah, those were the stone badges uh, two yeah. years ago, right? Right. Um, folks were just going nuts. And I was like, what are they doing? And I remember following a guy around and he was touching his to somebody else. And then there was another group that was um, uh, mapping themselves on the floor. It was bizarre, but I, I just stood and I watched. And for me, um, watching, you know, just being very observant is a huge thing. I also got to go to the voting village mm -hmm. and uh, we broke down, I forgot who it was that took me. That's so weird. Anyway, I'll tell the story. How about that? <laughs> Uh, so uh, somebody had, had come and took me and they said, come on, you got to go to Voting Village. And I remember that Rachel Toback was there and she yep. was doing her thing for some TV or something. I think it was CNN. I don't know. Look, I was just doing like this, like, wow, that's her. And so I just uh, what we were able to do was take down one of the machines and there was like parts everywhere. And we were there for like an hour and we were just diddling. The best thing ever. It was so great. Um, and of course, uh, the talks over at uh, over at Diana. Um, but yeah, for, from what I remember, it's definitely, definitely just 
the whole experience. And, and what people don't realize is that, yeah, that's 35,000 people in Vegas. It's a lot. <laughs> but uh, it, it could be overwhelming if you don't pace yourself. But, um, oh, and you know what else I did while I was there? Uh, I cut mohawks, which was really, really awesome. Because, um, as I said before, I was crowdfunded. And I really, really wanted to give back. Give back. It's very, very, very important for me. And so um, I said, well, I can do something. So I took some time. I, it was like two hours. Um, oh, because I hurt my foot. I remember <sighs> stories. But it took. I did two hours. I cut some hair. And people were like, oh, oh, this is nice. And it was fun. You know, it was just to bring out the tools and kind of it was wonderful um but yeah so that's it <laughs> so, uh, 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 episode, uh unicorn chefs we've had on the show are um harry hursty who is one of the founders of the voting village um he actually created um he discovered the hursty hack which was one of the first voting machine hacks um i want to say that was 15 16 years ago so uh he came on and shared uh finish recipes um, Maggie McElpine, who also is very prominent with the village and does a lot of election security work. Uh, we've also had the head of election security for uh, CISA, Matt Masterson, come on and he shared his hometown Cincinnati chili. Nice. Uh, we had the director of CISA, Chris Krebs, come on uh, the show to talk about, well, he, he talked about a lot of different things, but uh, he, of course, has been very famous in the last few weeks. Um, <laughs> because of his commitment to election uh, integrity. And the next time you come to DEF CON, you need to let me know. I run one of those villages myself. Fun times. Yep. So I, I run the ICS I village. We do critical infrastructure. Mm. So you want to learn how a power plant works. You want to learn how manufacturing works, water treatment. Um, that's uh, We build those exhibits. That's my jam. That's my jam. We All right. Well, there you go. <laughs> Let me know and I will hook you up. I would love that. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so let's check. Where's my, I usually keep my thing on my shirt, but a little, you got to check your meat y'all. Yep. Mine just, uh, mine just hit. I have a probe in, so I got my chicken is done. I will leave it in the oven. I am ready to plate whenever you are. All right, let me get it out. I don't think mine is gonna be as pretty as yours. <laughs> we gonna try it, it's all good. It's how it tastes, it's not how it looks. That's it. That's the last thing you need to be so. thinking about. <laughs> So if I wanted to be fancy with something like this, I would have a, a garnish of fresh parsley. Mm, would you now? Funny you should say that. Oh! <laughs> Dang it! <laughs> you got me. Wasted on my own good story. So let me get my... Mmm, Italian parsley. Oh, you're so nice. You really, you're teasing me with herbs. <laughs> oh, oh. oh, friendship. Mm. All right, so here we go. Just to kind of make it pretty. And. See, now, now I feel like I really need to judge mine up here because you've got your parsley. I'm like, what do I got? Oh, you got it. I know you got it. All right, give me a second. Actually, you know what? I think I even do have parsley. Hold on. Okay. Do you? I'm, I'm ready. Oh, it's got the hot coming off. Oh, look at that cheese. Mm. Game on. Game on. I'm ready for look, you. Look, look at that. It's it's a little tired, but it's still parsley. Hey, it's working. <laughs> It's good. Mm. 
Mm. I'll go ahead and I'll pour here. We just, let's just keep it PG. This food's really sexy. Oh, it is. It, it's, a, it's a sexy time type of deal. I see you getting fancy with that parsley. And I, we ain't got I, time for that. You, 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 <laughs> I, I got a little insecure. I'm, I'm, I'm stepping it up now. Don't be like that. Yeah, you were the one who's bragging about your parsley and like, oh, oh. I mean, it was like a burlesque show over there. All right. All right. So how we end every episode is we take a screenshot with our food. Mm -hmm. Ready? Yep. All right. Yeah, this is uh, this is my miniature version for my daughter. I made a small one. Love it. This is mine. Well, I guess my ring light is so bright, but <laughs> you can see the hot. You can see the hot. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. All right, Letitia. Any parting words for our audience? Um. Be kind. Enjoy your flowers and your family. And don't worry about what your food looks like as long as it tastes good and y'all are all sitting together or at this time through Zoom or whatever it is that you wanna do. Just um, just be nice. And it's never too late. Don't forget that. Uh, thank you so much for sharing your chicken cordon bleu as well as your story, which I think is an inspiration to a lot of different folks to um really i mean take that plunge um yeah. yeah we work in a technical field but it is something that is both open to everybody if you try and there are a lot of folks who are out there who are willing to help you out to to take that jump um so yeah. leticia thank you so much you're welcome it's been all my pleasure i'm so glad that you that you invited me have